G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm going to show you how to build one of these. See, here it is, I'll move this out of the way. One of those. And why would you want to build one of those? Well, they're really handy. And what is it? Well, it's a charging lead. But it's not a charging lead you'd normally find on your, on your four button charger. It's a special one that we use, or that I use, whenever I've got a pack that's got one cell who's, or one or two cells that just are a little bit too low or a little bit too high and it's causing the battery to take an awfully long time when balanced charging. And I'll show you what you need to make these leads. Now, it's really, really simple. You need some of these pin headers. Now, these are just 0.1 inch pin headers. You can buy these, I think you can buy like a hundred of them for like two dollars on eBay or something. You know, it's really not much to worry about. And you need just two of those because one of the cool things about these pin headers, and they just break off with your pliers like that, cool thing about a pin header is if you get a standard battery pack with a standard balance lead on it, then these pin headers are actually just the right pitch to plug into the battery. There you go, like that, see? So you can actually plug them into there. And so because we have each cell of the battery available through this lead, we can actually charge that cell or that cell or that cell just by moving this up and down. I hope you can see that by moving it up and down between the pins, we can charge any of the three cells independently. And that is really, really handy when you've got a cell that's a little bit low. Or if you've got one that's a little bit high and you want to take the top off it so that the balance charger can more easily charge the other two. So that's why I make up this lead and you can hear my charger going off in the background now. Now, so we've got a pin header on one end. There we go, that's the pin header there. And on the other end, we've got any old kind of plug that you might have, which will plug into one of these multi-lead balance multi-lead charge things. Now these, everyone should have these. This one's got a Deans and it's got a, something for charging your transmitter, something for charging someone else's transmitter. It's got an Ed JST connector and it's got a regular servo connector. So this one plugs into the regular servo connector here, like so, and then that plugs into the cell of my battery that I'm going to charge or discharge. Uh, the one I'm going to make up for you now, so you can see what I'm doing, has a JST connector on it. So it's going to, it could plug into the JST lead on here. So you could use anything that matches one of the plugs on here. So if you've just got the regular old XT60 connectors, well you can put an XT60 to thing, but it's actually quite hard because the leads are a bit thick. That's why I used one of these smaller connectors like a, an old servo lead or ESC lead, you know, you get a busted servo or a blown up ESC. You can just chop that lead off, the one that goes, normally goes off to your receiver, and peel back the white wire because you don't need it and just use the red and black. Simple as. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to terminate this one. If I can find all my tools, which will be hidden around here somewhere. Terminate this one, put my granny glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Here we go. Excuse me while this is probably way off shot because I can't see what I'm doing on the camera while I'm doing it. So we can just peel back the insulation on these wires. This is actually crap insulation. It's not silicon, it's plastic. Oh, I hate it. Get my knife. Hang on. Right, so I've peered back the insulation using my knife because the side cutters just weren't hacking it. So now I get my solder out and I tin up the ends. If you don't know how to solder, I put a tutorial on this channel some time ago so you can go and watch that. It's pretty easy to follow, I hope. Tin that up, tin that up. Here we go. I hope my head isn't in shot because I hate it when that happens. You want plenty of solder on these, plenty of fresh solder. It has to be fresh, otherwise it just will not will not solder. And then we take our pin headers, and I did break a couple off here, so that's not a problem. And we tin those as well, because the essential part of soldering, if you want to keep everything happening nice and quickly, is to make sure everything's loaded up with solder, nice fresh solder, and then you just heat them up and push them together. So we'll heat that one up. There we go, nice blob of fresh solder. And, whoops, wipe the excess off there, get around, because I want to do this so you can see it. Here we go, heat that up. Nice blob of fresh solder, okay. So now I can just, and it doesn't matter which way around you put these wires, of course, because this isn't polarized. It's just, you can go in either way, which means you've got to be a little cautious when you're using this because if you plug it in the wrong way, bad things can happen. Get the excess solder off my iron. Just do one of these up first. This is um, always easier to do when no one's looking, so excuse the bodge job. There's one end, and then I can do the other end. Now, of course, you could put some heat shrink on here beforehand. You might think I've forgotten, but no, I didn't because I haven't got any of the right size. So I'm just going to use liquid tape when this is done. I'm going to try and line things up without my head in the way and without my fingers blocking your view. There we go. Ta-da! Done. There it is. There's our simple little lead, which has a JST on this end and our 0.1 inch pin header on this end. And so now, when we want to charge up or discharge our battery, we just plug this into our multi-connection lead, making sure we get the polarity right, which has to go right with the JST because it's a keyed connector. And then we go over to our battery 
and obviously you notice on the battery the balance leads generally have a black end and a red end the black end is obviously negative the red end is obviously positive it's quite simple isn't it so we plug this in this way around always plug it with the black wire towards the black wire see like that I hope you can see that and likewise if I'm plugging into the middle cell I'll plug it that way so the black is closest to the black and when I'm doing this end obviously red to red black closest to black and that gives me access to the, all the three cells obviously if you had a six cell it's the same you just got more of these more of these connections here so it doesn't matter whether it's a two three four five or six cell pack you can use this to bring up a low cell or two or bring down a high cell or two so the balance operation operates more quickly I'm going to show you now on the whiteboard why it's so much better to do it this way than just to leave the balance charger trying to balance this if the pack is really really out of balance so let's go over to the whiteboard over there or there somewhere I don't know because I'm all out of orientation with the camera in this funny angle over to the whiteboard now G'day it's whiteboard time quick explanation of how these balance chargers charge your multi-cell batteries your, your two three four five six whatever cell batteries this is how these chargers do it how they balance them charging is easy you just push current into the battery and it changes the chemistry the battery charges up bingo but but if you've got more than one cell it's quite possible that one or more of the cells will be charged before the others and if you just keep pushing power into the battery it's going to overcharge the cells that get charged first and that can cause problems it can cause puffing it can cause explosions so you don't like that so what we've got in our regular four button chargers is something a little bit like this here's your battery it's got three cells one two three they're wired in series so the positive of one cell connects to the negative of the other and so forth through there there's two big fat wires come out of your battery that's these two up here these are the ones that handle the charge current and the discharge current when you plug it into your ESC all the current's going to go through these big wires here normally the balance lead isn't connected when you put your battery in the model it's not needed it's only used for balance charging and how does it work well here we have a battery we're charging it the current comes in through here it's controlled by this device here so this can turn off and on to vary the amount of current going you know you set your current level and so the charger controls the current that's being pushed in could be many amps going into a big battery goes through here charges up then suddenly bing a couple of the cells reach 4.2 volts oh they're fully charged what do we do because the other one's still only at four volts oh my god you know um can't just keep pushing current through the battery because these will go up too high and you could damage the battery but because we're charging our battery with all the cells in series there's no way to charge the individual cells alone with a normal four button charger there's no provision for it it's too expensive to do it that way so they do it the easy way by charging them all this is where our balance charger starts doing some clever things here's our battery over here we've got some fits see these fits that's what that diagram is here's a FET here what is a FET it's a field effect transistor sometimes they use regular transistors but quite often it's field effect transistors these transistors are really just a switch if we were to take a look and say well we've got a voltage here and a light bulb and a FET and the negative down there and if we put a voltage on here this is the gate this is the controlling part of the switch like the little lever that you throw if you put a voltage on here then this is effectively like having a switch which will close so the current can flow from the battery through the light bulb through there and back to the battery bingo so it turns on the FET now if you take that voltage away and make it zero then the switch opens so the light bulb will go out so by using a very very tiny current we can control a much bigger current using a FET we can switch the switch off and on very easily so what we've got here on the other end of our balance plug when we plug it into our charger we've got in this case three FETs one FET for each cell we've got switches sitting there so when we've charged our battery up to that point our four button charger does something rather naughty it will actually charge them to perhaps 4.21 volts per cell which is not recommended but there's no other way to avoid it so that will means this will probably go up to 4.1 volts Ta -da. so this is getting closer to fully charged the cell uh, but they're overcharged so what do you do now suddenly all of a sudden we've got this is still not charged but these are overcharged and that's when these FETs kick into action because what it does is it stops charging no more current flows through the battery from the charger suddenly oh, we've stopped and then what the charger does is it turns on this switch and that switch because if we look at what's going to happen when we turn those switches on we're going to have current from the battery through the balance lead over here up there and then this switch will be on so it'll flow through there through that resistor which will limit the amount of current that flows and then back through there to the bottom of that cell again so it will be discharging this cell through this FET switch 
and through that resistor. The resistor will get a little warm. That actually limits the amount of discharge current that can be used because they only use little resistors. So you're drawing maybe 100 milliamps, a tenth of an amp to discharge that cell. Also, because this one's too high, the microcontroller on your charger will instruct this FET to switch on. So again, you're going to have the current flowing down here, through there, through the switch, through the resistor, and back to there. So the charger is actually going to be discharging the two cells that are slightly overcharged. So they will come down to 4.2 volts again. And then the charger says, right, OK, this is still not up to 4.2 volts. Let's start charging again. So it'll start pushing current through the main leads and charging the battery up again. So these will go up to 4.21 again and be slightly overcharged, but this will go up to 4.2. There you go. So now this, charge, this cell is charged, but we've still got too much charge in these cells. So again, it will stop charging and it will turn on these switches here to discharge these back down to 4.2. And now our battery is charged and balanced, but there is a problem here. The problem is that this process, because it can only draw a very small amount of current out of the cells to bring them back down due to the small size of these resistors, takes a long time. So, and it can't put too much charge into the already charged cells without risking damage to them. So this incremental charge a bit, discharge, charge, discharge, charge, discharge, in order to bring this up, um, takes a lot of time. Sometimes it can take more time than the charger allows for charging and the, timer will, the charger will time out. You get an error saying over time or something. And so if you've got a cell that's out of balance, you can use your balance charge, but oh, it's going to take forever to charge the battery if it's really out of balance. That's why I make up the little lead with the little 0.1 millimeter, well, 0.1 inch pin header on one end and a connector of your choice on the other because I can then just plug the charger straight into the cell that is low and instead of having all this overcharging, discharging crap going on, it'll just charge that cell until it's full. And then I can charge the next cell by moving the connections up to there, I can charge that cell. And then I move the connection up to there, I can charge that cell. And then I know that all the cells are fully charged and not one of them has been overcharged because it hasn't had this silly arrangement here. And in reality, because I can charge this cell at, if it's say it's a 2200 milliampere hour battery, I can charge it at a couple of amps. Instead of charging it at, you know, a, a thing and then discharging it so slowly it takes forever. So that's why we make the lead up, that's why it's a really good idea. But a word of caution, if you do have a battery that's so unbalanced you have to use this method, keep an eye on it. These things are dangerous. And if you abuse them, if you have one where this one cell is consistently low, then really, nah, pays to replace it. But if you need to get it balanced really quickly, maybe it's just a one-off, maybe it just came from the box. You know, you bought it from Hobby King and you got 3.8, 3.8, 3.6, well then you're probably okay to bring it up with a, a single you know, charge on that low cell and you're away. So there you go. That's my little whiteboard session for today. Well, I'm going to show you an example of a really badly balanced battery. This is actually puffed a bit. It's a, it's a knackered battery, but sometimes it's just for whatever reason, you might get a battery and one of the cells is a bit low or, you, you know, it's just uh, for some reason it's got unbalanced because you've just been doing normal fast charges for a long time and the imbalance has got worse and worse. So what I've got here is a battery. It's connected through the XT60 to the charger for the main charge current. The balance leads plugged in the side. I've set the charge rate to one amp, three cells, balance charge. Let's start it up and wait for it to do its thing. There we go. So now we're charging. And if we go over to the balance screen, we can see, whoa, look at this. Um, we've got two cells at 14, well, 4.18 and one cell at 4.14. So this first cell is obviously quite a bit lower than the others. Point, and it's getting worse. You see it's going up. We're going up to 4.19 here. 4.18 and if we leave this long enough what will happen is this one's reached 4.2 notice it went to 4.21 see that it's actually going to 4.21 so the charger is busy charging all the cells in series at the moment to try and bring them all up to 4.2 but eventually what will happen is that as this did before it goes to 4.2 then it goes over to 4.1 and then it has to the charger has to discharge this cell see and that means the current drops right off Let's go back and notice now that it's not charging anymore because this is dropping down. It's actually trying to discharge the cell. Let's go back to the main screen and the current, it says one amp, but it'll be discharging at a very low amperage rate, trying to bring that other cell down. So yeah, when we have the situation here, it would take forever to bring this cell right up to the 4.2 volts. So what we're gonna do is put our lead into action. So we stop the charge and we will disconnect the battery from the normal way. And I'm going to have to change leads here because I don't have an XT60 to the one I want. So I'll put my multi-charge lead in, my multi-connection lead in here, like so. 
move this a little bit out there out of shot a bit here's my battery my dud battery and it was cell one that's the one closest to the black lead that was at fault so i get my little balance lead that i made up plug it into my jst and there's my little lead there so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to plug this lead into the balance lead like so black to black there we go and as i say cells number from one two three starting with black is always the negative end is always cell one so there we go now that's plugged in there now obviously i'm not going to leave this on balance charge or three cells because i'm only charging one cell so i go back to here lipo battery and then i go here i've got lipo charge charge current pace to keep it low because the balance port isn't designed to handle high currents in fact i'm going to drop this back here to about let's go back to say 0.7 just because you don't even you know 0.5 0.6, 0.7, maybe up to 1 amp is all you need. And 3.7, that's one cell. So now I just go into the start process. There you go. Start. And now we can see it's actually able to get this up to 4.2 straight away. And it's at 0.6 amps. So because now it doesn't have to do that sort of bouncing backwards and forwards, this cell will charge much more quickly because we're able to put current directly into it without having to go through the other cells and without having to sort of then suck the current out of them. So this won't take too long to bring up to the required voltage. Simple as that. That's how we've charged, charging the one cell that is low without stressing the other two cells that would be getting overcharged at this stage.